so welcome back. Um, this is uh, Tools for Parents to Support Their Child. Uh, this is week three, and this is the final presentation um, that links sort of the, the 10 tools that we're going to be um, thinking about for the past couple of weeks. So I hope it's been helpful, and uh, let's dive in. So just a reminder, um, I'm Joel. Uh, I'm the Elementary School Curriculum Coordinator at ISP, and here's my email address at the bottom if you need me or come to contact me about anything uh, to do with the learning in elementary school. Happy to help. So just a reminder, these uh, tools um, have been taken from Harvard Graduate School of Education and uh, Project Zero. Project Zero is um, a particular part of um, Harvard Graduate School of Education. And um, the ideas have been brought together by the author, Ron Richard, who's created a couple of books, Making Thinking Visible, Creating Cultures of Thinking. Okay, so just to recap, um, in part one, we looked at developing a growth mindset and thinking about the question, what makes you say that, and how that can encourage uh, students and children um, to embellish their thinking for others. And then the idea about challenging, but don't rescue um, our students. And the fact that challenge is an important part of the learning process and thinking about the learning pit. And last week, we thought about what questions did you ask today and sort of about sort of, you know, how we can um, really ask questions that the students are going to be interested in, powerful questions, and that really show that what we value from them. Focus on the learning rather than the work, and how, how can we make the learning the, the thing that's the important thing and not the completion of the work, but actually the learning process. And again, thinking about that process over product idea that we shared from um, a couple of uh, videos back. And then also about the idea about supporting your child in arguing effectively and persuasively how important that is. Okay, so this week we're going to be looking at four things. And so we're going to be thinking about name and notice thinking. We're going to be thinking about providing time to pursue passions. We're going to be thinking about making our own thinking visible. And we're going to be thinking about make, uh, fostering and making connections. So let's start with name and notice thinking. So what does this really mean? Well, what it means is that, you know, use a language of thinking to name and notice the thinking that your child is using. You know, for instance, when, when we're listening to our children, we're really, really listening to them, we'll be able to sort of think about what type of thinking they are actually doing. And why is this important? Well, it makes it more visible to them when we're able to name it and notice it. It also means that they will continue to think in this way, because again, it's something that we value and something that we have heard in them. And lastly, they will be able to think in a more independent manner because of this because they know, oh, this is how I can build explanations, or this is how I can wonder. So here's some examples. So the different types of thinking, and you know, think is, about, I think, one of the most 125th, I think, used word in the English language. And so there's many different words for think, but sometimes we just say the word think. And one of the ideas of you know, Ron Richard is that there's eight sort of thinking moves that help to build our understanding. And these are the eight um, thinking moves which he calls. And so, you know, we want our students to be observing and wondering and reasoning. We want them to be building explanations, considering different viewpoints, making connections, going deeper um, and uncovering complexity, and then forming conclusions. So when we're aware of this type of thinking, we can also name and notice it with our children. So, for instance, you know, some things that we can say when we're really listening to our students and we notice that they're thinking in such a way you know, we can say, I like how you use what you already know to make connections. And again, that that's, that's a trigger for them to know that, ah, oh, this is making connections. This is what I'm doing right now. Or that's a perspective I had not thought about. It makes them to think about, oh, this is a different way to think about something. Or I value the way that you are able to build an explanation about this. Oh, this is me really understanding something in, and I'm able to explain it. Or you've really looked closely and in detail. So these are just some ways in which we can notice the thinking that our children are doing. And then again, this helps them to become more independent. All right, number eight is about providing time to pursue passions. Now we all know passions are very important. We all have different passions, but how do we really help and support students and children to pursue their own passions? There's this great quote from Oprah Winfrey, and she says, passion is energy. Feel the power of what comes from focusing on what excites you. And I think that's such an important thing, the power of what comes from focusing on what excites you. Now, how do we give the children the opportunity 
to learn and to be part of something which, which, which they really enjoy. And I think this comes from, you know, the questions that we can ask and support them about what it is that they enjoy. So how do we do that? Well, you know, sit down and ask them, what do you love to do? Or maybe, you know, what do you want to find more out about? What do you get so lost in that you lose track of time? What can you talk about for hours? What do you find fulfilling or enjoyable or important? These are just some questions again for us to consider asking our children and they can help us just to pursue their passions and gives them that energy and that focus in learning which we really want them to to be so they can be a lifelong learner okay number nine is make your own thinking visible so we're models to children in terms of what it means to be a thinker and a learner and so the words and the way in which we explain ourselves will be passed on to our children and so we need to model the fact that we have passions and we have curiosity about the world, that we reflect and maybe we don't know everything, that learning may be sometimes challenging, but at the same time I can come out of that when I continue to work on what I'm doing. Or, you know, even again, just making my thinking visible in terms of, ah, I'm making a connection to something that I've previously done. Or I used to think this, but now I think this. So again, just being aware of the type of thinking that we are doing so that we can become a positive role model for our children in being a thinker. So lastly, we're going to be thinking about fostering connections. And fostering connections is really about students who constantly find new information. As children, you're learning so much about you and your world around you. And so to learn and to make sense of the information, you must be able to connect it with prior experience and then integrate it to what you're currently finding out about. And this is just a way, you know, we can use questions and we can help and support students to make these connections between something that they have previously done, something that they're doing right now, and something they might do in the future. So again, there's some questions here and things to think about. So how does this connect with? How does this fit with something that you already knew? How might you connect these ideas to what you've been finding out? Or what similarities are there between this to this? Or what's the difference between this and this? So again, just asking these more open questions to, to our children and to our students, it can really help them to develop this way of con making connections in their head, making connections between things that they've learned before and things which they're going to learn in the future. Okay, so over the past uh, three weeks, we've sort of delved into sort of 10 areas and these ideas from a growth mindset to what makes you say that, uh, to challenge but don't rescue, to thinking about learning versus work. Um, and really, you know, there's just been an opportunity for us to think about, you know, how can we support um, our children at home and um, the students that we have in our classrooms and our, and our schools. Um, and these are posters that I've created for, for the Spanish population. There's a little bit more information if you would like to read about that and all these ten tools. Um, there's also this, which is um, a English version of uh, nine of the apps making um, making connections not on here. Um, and then there's this, which is has all of the ten um, tools here in one page, which um, I've created as well um, in Spanish. All right, and at the end here, you can then click on to um, these links, and this will take you to uh, specific things. So we have the nine tools, the visual there, uh, the 10 um, tools, which does include the connections, the 10 tools for parents. Um, and you can just click these out. And you know, if you have access to a printer, you might want to pin it up and it might be a reminder for you to, to think about using in the next couple of weeks during the continuing of distance learning, or even in the summer and maybe beyond that. And then at the bottom here, you can click onto these links and then you might be able to click on um, the, the posters and they're in either English or Spanish. So I hope it's been a useful three weeks. Um, I've enjoyed sharing some of the things um, from Ron Richard and from Project Zero in Harvard Graduate School of Education. Um, again, please reach out to me if you have any questions or queries. I'm always happy to, to help and um, come back to you. Okay, be well.